defendant Kendrick's representations to the court that and others that they're winning and therefore we go to them. If they're winning, then let's just keep it rolling because the state vehemently objects to a mistrial. The YSL trial is back and Judge Whitaker is in the judge's seat now instead of Judge Glanville. Judge Whitaker is hearing all of the motions that have been filed recently and she's making decisions, but some of the bigger decisions she's leaving for tomorrow, like whether or not to disqualify Love and Hilton and the big, big, big motion as to a mistrial, she's also leaving for tomorrow. But as you can see, Lawyer Love, she's ready to go. She's like, hey, let's roll. Let's roll. So this thing has started to reach its climax. It looks like we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But at the minimum, what we do know is Lawyer Love is ready to roll. That's a part of this motion. That is, that is a part of this motion, Your Honor, yes. That there is a requirement that everything after 612 is void. Okay. And in that motion, we argue uh, what I stated earlier, that I don't believe it's possible it's to erase possible. that information okay. from the jury. Okay. Um, also, I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Okay, I appreciate it. All right, so... Um, yeah, so there are a lot of different grounds in here. There, there's the, the state sought it because they wanted the defense to ask for a mistrial so they could get a mistrial and try the case over again. Um, that substantively speaking, um, the ex parte was a critical stage at which the defendants were excluded um, and then the concept of, which we've kind of brushed over somewhat, um, that um, Judge Glanville's comments in the ex parte itself amounted to unconstitutional coercion of Mr. Copeland to testify. That's, those are exactly my arguments. Uh, that's correct, Your Honor. Okay. There's three main issues, three main arguments that I put forward in that motion. Um, the only thing that I can think of that maybe I did not sufficiently highlight is just the um, tremendous experience of the prosecutors and skill of the prosecutors in the state as both, um, in this case, as both attorneys and prosecutors. So I, I cannot believe that they would not have asked for this ex parte, conducted the ex parte in the fashion that they did it, unless they knew that they would be forcing us into a position to request a mistrial. As Mr. Shard has said, we are winning this case. The state's witnesses have not testified the way that I imagine they expected them to testify. And I do not be believe that they should be allowed a do-over in this case, Your Honor. All right. uh, but I'm not going to repeat what's already okay. in front of you. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Again, if you have questions, I'm happy All to right. answer any. And then also sort of in this motion and asserted in a lot of um, the defense motions are what we again touched on, that Brady material arose from this ex parte and y'all have it now, so it's not a Brady violation anymore. And, that, and, and, there was. and that's not a real requirement okay. in order to grant our motion, All right. Your Honor. All right, I just wanted to make sure I covered that as well. Um, okay. Uh, does the state want to be heard in with regard to anything not already in their response? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Just um, based on um, Defendant Kendrick's representations to the court that and others that they're winning, and therefore we go to them. If they're winning, then let's just keep it rolling because the state vehemently objects to a mistrial. Okay. And um, I, I am unclear how uh, we are arriving at the conclusion uh, that the state, in conducting something according to the rationale presented to the court by the defendants so far, that the state never intended that they find out about in an effort to cause them to do something. I don't know. I don't know how those two can be squared with one okay. another. Um, so we would ask that the court um, deny the motions uh, for mistrial based on the state 
for, based on anything, I'd point out that this is not the first or the second or the third motion for mistrial. The state has objected every step of the way. We continue to object to a mistrial. Again, if they feel they're winning, let's keep it rolling. Um, and we would ask that the court just deny it. Um, of course, the court is aware that uh, the issue here is not whether anyone acted improperly, but what objective the prosecutor is trying to achieve. It does not make sense to assert on the one hand that we want you to not ever learn about it and on the other that we are intending that you be goaded into an act by our doing it. Okay. So thank you. There are issues here as to whether people acted improperly. Um, perhaps that does not go to the goading, but I don't want to, you know, it's clear in my motion that we are arguing that there was improper conduct by both the state and the judge that violated Mr. Kendrick's rights. Um, he has been locked up in Rice Street for 22 months. I have done everything that I can to move this trial along. I filed a motion, I believe at the end of March or early April, to try to get this trial moving at a more deliberate pace. That motion was essentially denied. I have no interest in retrying this case, Your Honor. And we are winning, I think, by any measure. So I'm asking for this mistrial, but I'm doing it because I have absolutely no choice but to do that, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Um, and I don't know whether this was, I think this was Mr. Uh, Nichols' reply to the state's response. Um, so I don't know if it was with regard just to Mr. Nichols' own motion for mistrial or also Mr. Kendrick's motion for mistrial, but I think it's the argument is applicable um, to Mr. Kendrick's as well. So I'm going to address it right now. Um, Mr. Nichols argues that the state doesn't, says that the defense's characterization is a mischaracterization of what happened in the ex parte, but does not offer their own characterization and therefore they essentially aren't opposing it. And I should just take as fact everything that the defense said. Um, and I do find that the prosecution did in fact oppose the characterization made by the defense and posit their own characterization. In their response, they say, quote, the hearing in chambers was proper, unquote, and then quote case law. So that to me is not the state saying, yeah, your characterization is right. That is them saying, no, we were not trying to get a mistrial here. We didn't do anything improper. Um, so 